Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So today I got a pretty cool exclusive look at something for you. Uh, we're going to do a displaced abomasum surgery on a cow in the fresh group. Here with me is Dr. Melissa Murray. Welcome to the channel, Dr. Murray. Thank you. Um, can you tell the people what uh, displaced abomasum is? So displaced abomasum is a compartment of the stomach of the cow. So the cow has four compartments, the rumen, reticulum, omasum, and abomasum. And the abomasum is like our stomach, a simple stomach. And it's got some mobility, it can move around. Um, but when a cow is not feeling well, maybe not eating a lot, and the rumen, which is a huge compartment, is usually really full and stiff and doesn't let things move around. But when that gets more empty, that abomasum, which is normally on the right, can move around. It can kind of just glide back and forth. And on occasion, it'll move to the left where it's not supposed to be and, and fill up with air and then get stuck there. So that's when a cow has a displaced abomasum. Um, and when it's stuck there, then food can't feed material can't move through normally they feel uncomfortable they don't want to eat um just big old stomach ache big stomach ache yeah gonna try to alleviate some of that burden on that cow today good this cow is tall yeah Vanessa. she's old uh, she didn't breed well she actually had a little little angus calf I want to make sure it all goes in the. I'm not out of the book. It's not a very big vessel. Anymore. Hopefully, my tip is functioning. Well. What shot are we giving her now? This is the lighting so that she won't feel the incision and the surgery through the skin and the muscle. So just like when a person's getting a surgery, they get they get anesthesia. This is an anesthesia for a cow. A type of anesthesia. It's a local anesthesia. I'm going to give her a general anesthesia sedative. So that was the that was what we saw. Dr. Murray putting in the tail head back there, underneath the tail. So that relaxes her, makes her a little more chill. Giving her a chill pill. Get it good and even. So we want to make this a sterile seal. And ideally what you want to do is wash from inside to Okay. The insides are cleaner. Wash and rinse three times. Amazing. All right, so I'm going to wipe off the iodine. And work the incision. Right behind the rib. So what's the drape for? The drape is to keep all the instruments and the suture clean in case they accidentally touch the hide or the hair. So basically there's lots of different layers of keeping this a sterile process to keep the cow healthy, yeah. that's what you're telling me. So this is a, it's a major operation, we're opening our abdomen and there's a lot of ways that we can get contamination in here. So we wanna minimize it. We're obviously not in a hospital, so there is dust uh, and dirt in the air that's going to get in here. Yeah, dirt, manure, birds, <laughs> feed trucks. The drape helps a little bit with that, too, to keep some of the airborne stuff out. So we went, just went to the skin, now we're going to go through some fat. A more. She's got a lot of fat on the outside here. Some muscle. 
three muscle layers, that's one. There's two, they're not a lot. Oh, looks like you just hit a little a vein or an artery right there, huh? Right, She's a good cow. The last couple layers are kind of thin, so I'm going to pull them out. She feels a little bit, her muscles moving a little bit there. That's one. She doesn't like that one very much. You can hear the air is going from outside to in. That would mean that there was less pressure inside the cow than there was out, out yeah. here, right? Yeah. That's to allow the diaphragm to function. To Pretty help. cool machine. That was a cool machine. Um, this is a teat cannula and it's got a nice smooth surface so it won't cut inside of her, but it's got a hole in it. So we're going to take this tubing that's attached to that teat cannula. Stretch it out. It's all stiff. I'm going to protect the end of my finger. I'm going to put it in her abdomen and go all the way over to the other side, which is where her abdomen is. And then we'll let the gas out this end here. It smells pretty bad. It smells kind of like vomit. That would make sense sense because it is their acidic simple stomach. You can hear it. Not sure if they can pick that up Bubbling or not, but out. they might. I'm just keep listening to make sure it keeps coming out. So what's the purpose of letting the gas out of the abomasum? Um, so the abomasum is like a big balloon on the other side. And uh, it's blown up and stuck on the other side. So it's very hard to move that balloon just because it's so big and firm all the way over to the other side without taking gas off, making it flabby. On the other end, I'm trying to pull the abomasum back around to where it's supposed to be. It's supposed to set right here. And so the abomasum is supposed to be on this side, but it's made its way over there and filled up with gas. Filled up with gas and got stuck there. And it's gotten stuck. And then that impedes the flow of feed, makes her feel bad, she doesn't want to eat. It's quite a stomach ache. Yeah. Is that the abomasum that you have in your hand right there? This is called omentum, and it's all fat. Um, it's fat storage for when she might need it later. That is a piece of um, the gut, it's called the duodenum. Yep. And the exit to the abomasum, the pylorus, is close to that. So I'm going to go a little bit below that. And everything else wants to come out. Let's start over. Yeah, that's what we want. So that's the exit to the um, Mason called the pylorus. It's really thick and muscular and that's what we want to stick right into the incision right here so that she doesn't try and displace her abomasum again. So when you sew her up you're gonna you're gonna stitch the abomasum to the outside wall of the cow so that it's not gonna move again. To the muscle. Layer. To the muscle, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm just gonna hold this package right here so it stays. So we're starting to suture her up. How many different layers of suture do you put in there? We'll put two in the muscle layers and then one in the skin. So three all together. This very inner layer, it's hard to block it. So that's what she's feeling a little bit. Hard to keep them from feeling a little bit of that sensation. 
to take some momentum, a little bit of a pylorus, which is uh, attached to the abomasum. What she's feeling is this inner lining of the abdomen that doesn't respond to the lidocaine. So every time I go through that, she's getting a little uncomfortable. If she was very uncomfortable, she would probably be telling us in a different way. Yeah. And maybe she just doesn't want to be standing here anymore. So this thread that you use on the inside of the cow, this must just kind of like biodegrade in there, kind of, right? It does. It dissolves. Slow. It's very slow to dissolve. So basically, the incision is just just for you to be able to get your arm in there and pull the and drain the drain the gas and pull the apple mason back over yep. where it's supposed to be. Well, while we're in there, we're also feeling around for anything abnormal, like a stomach ulcer. Or a May as well do a checkup if you got her open, yeah. right? Hardware, big livers, things you can't feel or see otherwise. Well, we'll get some different suture for the skin. Yeah, there's a few different ways you can do this. Um, surgery or to correct the, the DA, you can just roll the cow over. It's one easy way, but it's not permanent. Oftentimes, the DA will come back, the abdomen will rotate again. Yeah. Um, that, what's that called? Toggling? Is that just a roll. And you roll. Can roll and toggle, and that, and that, in theory, will attack the abdomen right to the body wall, but it's blind, so you don't see what you're attacking, so you yeah. could, could attack something. the wrong thing. Yeah. Attack the wrong thing. And, and then there's uh, surgery like this on the other side, so you open the cow up from the left side, um, and then reach down and tack it on her belly, or the, the last way would be to roll the cow upside down and open her up um, on her midline. Sort of a little off the midline. Yep. And, uh, that seems like more of a pain in the butt than this. Yeah, we used to do that a lot. Uh -huh. So skin heals end to end. So we have to make sure the ends are exactly opposing. We don't want them rolling under, yep. rolling out. Sometimes You're stitching they... her back up just like it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> She'll have a little naked area here for a while and these stitches will not dissolve. So they'll have to be cut out in a couple of weeks. Yep. All right, folks, thank you for watching along with the surgery. I hope it was something you enjoyed watching. Um, Dr. Murray, uh, do you have anything you'd like to say about the post-op, how it went? Uh, the surgery went fairly smoothly. The, the cow was a little uncomfortable and she moved around a bit, so that made it a little more, take a little more time. But otherwise, um, inside her abdomen, her uterus felt good. Um, nothing was adhered. Um, her liver felt good, didn't feel any hardware, so, um. Kind of did a little checkup in there while, while we had her open. Yeah. So. And the pexy for the, um, the, where we sewed the omentum to the body wall went well, so. Okay. Well, folks, there you have it. Uh, displaced abomasum surgery. So, uh, you know how the end of every video goes. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, and eat your dairy products, and have a nice day.